Hi everyone, um, I'm Alan from Quick Think Media. Um, I'm the head of digital media. Um, so a bit of background on Quick Think. So Quick Think is a performance marketing agency which operates across all digital platforms but specializes in social. So Quick Think, oh cool, thank you. Which one is it? That one, yeah. Good. Um, so, so Quick Think got onto Facebook quite early on um, in its, uh, for the ad platform. So we've been on it around six years now. And the first industry that we got working, much like IEMA, was um, online gambling. So online gambling being quite notoriously a difficult uh, competitive market with, market with really tight margins. So we figured if we could get real money gaming working, then we could get use similar methodology and apply it to other industries. So we've now expanded our client base, and um, we work uh, for charities, Macmillan, Marie Curie, a few dating apps, social gaming apps, um, groceries, retail, ticketing systems, and, and many more. So I've personally been running Facebook traffic for around four years now. Um, although we do operate across all social channels, this presentation will be focusing on uh, Facebook and Instagram because they present the best opportunity for brands and products to take advantage of social traffic. Um, so firstly, so f for those who don't know, Facebook acquired Instagram back in 2012. So throughout this presentation, anything I say that can be done on Facebook can also be done on Instagram because they both work on the same ad platform. So the opportunity, Facebook and Instagram combined are absolutely huge. So by the end of 2015, they had, between the two of them, 2 billion monthly active users. And well over a billion of them were logging in every single day. To put this in context of the UK market, there's over 29 million UK users logging in every day. You can kind of obviously see from the graph here that that's showing no signs of slowing down, but also it's worth noting that percentage usage is higher amongst millennials, and the amount of times that users log in is higher amongst millennials as well. So we expect that just to grow more and more. 20% of all time spent online is spent on Facebook. So that's higher than any other single property on the whole of the web. Um, so within the UK market, you're looking at all of Google-owned sites such as Gmail, YouTube, they take up around 15% of all online time. BBC sites around 4%. So the fact that Facebook is a single property and it's higher than all of them means that it's a really great opportunity for brands and products. It's the single platform that your audience is on the most. But still, there's quite a lot of conversation about Facebook being just for branding. Um, so the example we've got here is a lady posting onto the Domino's pizza wall with a lovely picture of her pizza um, saying, best pizza ever, keep up the good work, guys. And Domino's have actually replied to that saying, so sorry about that and point them towards customer complaints. So they presume that it's just yet another complaint on their Facebook wall. Um, although this is kind of a funny example of using it wrong, community management really isn't Facebook's strong point anymore. Um, organic distribution over the past couple of years has decreased dramatically. If you were to post your Facebook wall now, only around 1% to 2% of your Facebook likes will actually see your content. Not surprisingly, Facebook wants your money. Um, they need to prove their worth to shareholders, and how they're trying to do this is through building advertising revenues. Um, so we believe um, that the way that Facebook have built this ad pl platform is a far cry from community management. It's actually a really strong direct response tool that can drive hard ROI figures. So I've come up with three reasons why Facebook is such a strong DR tool. So firstly, Facebook is the point of sale medium. Facebook is rich, immersive, creative formats, and Facebook is people-based, not cookie-based. So we'll explore these three reasons in, in more detail, and then I'll finish with an example of how this might look in practice for one of our clients. So firstly, Facebook being the point of sale medium. So a lot of people have said this already today. Uh, mobile commerce, m-commerce, is growing rapidly. So by the end of 2016, it's estimated to be almost 25 billion um, in the UK. And by the end of 2019, almost 40 billion. So how is this relevant to Facebook? 90% of all Facebook sessions are on mobile. So where people are spending 20% of all online time, that's on mobile. 
This means that Facebook is increasingly becoming the place to hit consumers just before a purchase decision. So every single day, people are opening their Facebook feeds, walking down the street whilst watching TV, and this is an opportunity for brands and products to speak to them. So therefore, Facebook is an incredibly powerful platform to influence purchase decisions. So secondly, Facebook is rich, immersive, creative format. So firstly, Facebook ads are native, so they take the same form as users' content. So when you're scrolling through your feed, um, your friends' latest holiday photos are in the same format as an ad. Um, also, pretty much all of the ad types take up the whole of the screen. So both of these factors mean that there's a decrease in ad blindness on Facebook as a platform and high viewability. So people are actually going to see your ads on the platform. So I'm just going to run through a variety of a few creative formats available on Facebook which create really immersive experiences for users and are suitable for lots of different business objectives. So firstly, video. So video has taken over everyone's news feeds on Facebook. Um, so basically, Facebook tweaked their algorithm about a year ago to display more video content. So the reasons why they've done this? Um, so firstly, they want to compete with YouTube. They want Facebook to be the destination people go to to consume video content. Um, secondly, for a better user experiences. So uh, Facebook sees that users are more likely to like, tag their friends, and share video content and static imagery. So the increased distribution of video on Facebook is great for companies because you don't pay a premium to put video content out there. It costs the same as a static image. Um, and it allows you to engage your users and um, get your story across with nice, rich media. Um, also, so there's no need for um, this video production as well to be really expensive productions. The barriers to entry are actually quite low. So these two videos here are typical of what would be high-performing videos on Facebook. So on the left is a cinemagraph for Deliveroo. So a cinemagraph being a video that eternally loops where only one part of the video is moving. Um, and the one on the right for Gap just simply being jumpers on sticks dancing around to um, advertise their new jumper range. So you're kind of looking at 10 to 15 second max videos that people, you've got to, people are scrolling through their feeds on their mobile news feed. They don't have a lot of time. You need to get the point across quickly. So next we have carousel ads. So you've probably seen these on your Facebook feed as well. Um, so basically users can swipe along and you can have up to 10 items in your carousel. Um, so this is great for advertising a set of products or advertising a set of features of a specific product. Um, so the example we've got here is for our client Book it B, which is um, a ticketing system. So you sell tickets to your events on Book it B. Um, so the carousel is simply just showing a few different events that users could, could sell tickets on. Um, at this point, I also want to draw your attention to, if you can see it, um, the call to action at the bottom. So in this case, it's sign up. By clicking on the picture or clicking on the sign up CTA, you're taken straight to uh, Bucketbee's website where you can register. But there's a variety of different uh, call to actions you can use dependent on your business objectives. So say you have an app and you want to drive installs, you can change the call to action to install now. You click on it, it takes you through to the App Store, and you can install. If you want to re-engage users that already have your app, you can change it to Use App, and you drop them straight into your app from Facebook when they click, and you can even deep link them into a specific part of the app that you wanted them to get to. Um, you can even, uh, if you're trying to drive in-store visits, you can change the CTA to Get Directions. Um, in this case, once you click it, it opens up your Maps application and will map your location to the nearest store. Beyond that, you can also track how many store visits you've got as a, as a result from your ad, because it can track the, how many people have come in geographic proximity of your store. So what I'm trying to get across here is that whatever your business objective KPIs, there's kind of a call to action to suit that, and that users are only ever a click away from that from Facebook to helping you achieve your objective. So the last ad type I wanted to go through today is Canvas. So as you can see here, when they click onto the ad, it opens up a microsite all hosted within Facebook. So this creates a nice, really immersive experience. So you can put videos in here. The user can scroll through um, static images, um, carousels again. 
Uh, you can even do it so when you tilt your phone, you can explore more about the product. Um, so this allows products to educate users about what is so great about their brand or their product um, in a really nice, immersive way. And throughout, you've also got um, CTA, so you've got the shop training there, so they can go straight onto your website from the ad unit. So Facebook ad types, in general, they have the capabilities of high-quality branding ads, which give users immersive experiences, um, whilst also benefiting from direct call-to-actions and are also DR units. So the third point is that Facebook is people-based, not cookie-based. So this is a really important point. So what we talk about here is the kind of amount of data that Facebook has on people, but also the accuracy of the targeting on Facebook too. So firstly, uh, the amount of data. Um, Facebook has access to a huge amount of data. It's quite scary. They know everything about everyone in this room probably. Um, it's, but it's great for advertisers. Um, so. Firstly, first-party data. So you can take anything from your database and upload it to Facebook via phone numbers or email addresses, and then that becomes a targetable audience on Facebook. So say you want to take your highest-paying users or um, someone who's purchased once and you want to get them to make a repeat purchase. You can also build these audiences in real time from pixels or app events. So App events would be if someone monetizes on your app there, then that's triggered back to Facebook, and instantly they move into a new audience, which is targetable on Facebook. So what this allows you to do is target down to an absolute individual level. Secondly, you have access to all of Facebook's data. So on a basic level, that's demographic, age, gender, uh, behavioral, uh, what pages people have liked. Um, but you also have information on how people have interacted with ads before. Um, so, for example, you can optimize your campaigns towards users who are more likely to install your app. And what Facebook is doing there is showing your ads to users who have clicked through an ad before and installed an, ad, uh, an app, so they're more likely to perform that action that you want them to. What kind of proves Facebook um, data's worth is lookalikes. So you can create lookalikes on quite a lot of platforms. So basically what you do is um, you take your first party data, let's say we've got 1,000 people who have purchased at my store before. We upload that to Facebook, and then Facebook finds the audience which most similarly uh, represents that initial audience based on demographics and interests. So you can take a list of 1,000 users and expand it to hundreds and thousands of users that look like that audience. Does it work? It works because lookalikes are consistently the strongest performing campaigns for pretty much all of our clients. So that shows just the worth of Facebook's data. So last, we have third-party data. So Facebook has partnered with a variety of data providers, um, such as Experian and Axiom, and this means that you can access analog offline data on Facebook matched with unique identifiers of people's actual profiles. So it's probably useful to run through a quick example of how this could look in practice. So let's say that I'm a mobile phone provider, um, and I want to find people who are in market for a high-value contract. So what I can do is I've already got some customers. I have a list of 1,000 customers who have contracts with my company that are over £50 monthly tariff. I upload this to Facebook, and I build a lookalike, and I expand this to a million users, let's say. I can then filter out that lookalike and target just people from Experian can provide me with the data of people whose mobile phone contracts are running out in the next three months. So by combining all those three different segments into one campaign, we have a high, really highly targeted, accurate campaign uh, to run, which should get results. So secondly, that is the accuracy of data. So a wealth of data isn't unique to Facebook as a platform. The combination of it probably is, and maybe the amount of it, but where Facebook really excels is through its accuracy. So consumers are now cross everything, cross device, cross platform, cross browser. Um, and this means cookies are outdated as a form of targeting and tracking. 60% of adults use at least two devices a day. So the way that Facebook gets around this problem is you are targeting people in a logged in status. So I have an iPad at home and if my girlfriend wants to borrow it, if she wants to go on Facebook, she'll log out of my Facebook and log into her Facebook. You can be sure that you're going to target her with the ads. 
if she goes onto my browser, she's unlikely to log out of my Chrome profile, for example. So by log, uh, targeting the logged-in states, you can be a lot more accurate. So we ran a campaign for Iceland, their rebranding campaign, uh, The Power of Frozen. You might have seen it. Um, basically, they were trying to move away from the kind of uh, buy one, get one free bargain kind of elements of frozen food and more to the health benefits and um, other kind of benefits to, to their products. So our target demographic for this, it was a quite broad campaign, was females 25 to 45. Um, and an independent report from Nielsen on that campaign that we ran showed that our targeting was 95% on target. So 95% of our spend that we targeted towards females 25 to 45 actually hit females 25 to 45. So if you compare that to other platforms, let's say, for example, display, if you try and work out what the accuracy of display of actually reaching its audience is, there's quite a few mixed numbers. Normally, the highest you'll see is probably around 70%. But with some publishers, it can actually be as low as 30 to 40%. So if you think you're getting 40% accuracy on your campaign, you have a 100 grand budget, that means 60 grand of your uh, budget is effectively wasted. If that 100 grand was to go on Facebook, for example, only 5,000 pounds of it would be wasted. Obviously, it would be great to have 100% accuracy, but I think the small uh, inaccuracies come from maybe fraud accounts or fake details put into accounts. So not only does this help with accurate targeting, but on the other end, it helps with tracking and attribution. So in this example for, for Iceland Power of Frozen, we were getting, as a lot of people have explained already say, um, cross-device conversions. A lot of people were seeing the ad on mobile, 90% of Facebook sessions being on mobile, that's naturally gonna happen, but then they felt more comfortable doing their full grocery shop on desktop. They wanted to find out more about the products. So, but we were able to track through Facebook people who had seen the ad on their mobile device and then gone onto desktop, converted, and how much they'd spent online. So that means that you can actually correctly attribute um, the results to Facebook rather than you know, getting this messy consumer journey, which is getting more and more complicated all the time. So to kind of conclude those three reasons, so first, why Facebook is such a great uh, direct response tool. So, Firstly, Facebook is the point of sale medium. So m-commerce is growing. People are getting more and more used to buying things on their phone. There's a large database of users on Facebook checking their Facebook feeds every single day. This is opportunity for brands to talk to them. The proximity between Facebook and the point of sale is getting ever, ever closer. Um, secondly, Facebook is rich, immersive, creative formats. It's bridging the gap between a nice branding ad where users can interact with all the content, learn more about your products, benefiting from a direct call to action where they can go straight to your website and they're only ever a click away from your objective. And lastly, that it's people-based, not cookie-based. Um, so there's huge amounts of data accessible on people, so you can be extremely targeted, and that targeting is going to be accurate because you're targeting a logged-in status. So it's the combination of these three points which I believe really makes Facebook a really strong tool for DR.